Hey, sweetie. Yeah. Did you clean up your room? Good. And did you help out mama? Good too. Okay. I have to record a video now, so daddy has to go, okay? All right. I love you too. Bye. Mwah. All right. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Alex, thanks for clicking, and welcome to this lesson on 20 intense phrasal verbs. So these phrasal verbs are actually quite simple when compared to a lot of other phrasal verbs, because all you have to do with them is take the main verb and add the preposition or add the, the particle, basically, and uh, you intensify the main verb with these phrasal verbs. So let me show you what I mean by starting at the top. So call, call up. So to call someone, to call someone up. They both mean to call someone. Call up just sounds a little cooler, a little bit more intense, a little bit more informal in a way. So for example, if you say, hey, I'll call you tomorrow, or hey, I'll call you up tomorrow. Uh, both are fine. Both mean almost the exact same thing. Just call up sounds a little bit more emphasized um, when you call someone. Next, clean and clean up. So if I tell you to clean your room or clean up your room. Now clean up, it means to organize, to tidy, to make it as clean as possible, put everything away and also maybe, you know, wash your tables and things like that. Um, clean is very general. <laughs> so if you say, you know, I need to clean the floor, this is a little different than if you say, I need to clean up the floor. So clean the floor could mean that you need to like wet wash it with a mop or something like that. Um, if you clean up the floor, it could mean there are things on the floor. But if you just tell someone to clean their room, clean up their room, or clean their mess, or clean up their mess, clean up gives it a little bit more intensity. So if I say, hey, clean up your mess. If I, you know, I was talking with my daughter, I asked her if she cleaned up her room. Yes, she did. So that's a bit more intense, a bit more casual, like most phrasal verbs, or all phrasal verbs are definitely a bit more casual. So continue continue on. So if I say, ah, oh, he continued talking for another 30 minutes because you had a long conversation with someone and you didn't want to be rude and interrupt your friend and your friend wouldn't stop talking. So if I want to emphasize that even more, I could say instead of he continued talking for another 30 minutes, he continued on talking for another 30 minutes. Like you're saying continue and continue on, continue on. There's a little bit of extra emphasis uh, when you set add on to this one. Fall, fall down. So this one is a little redundant because to fall does mean to, you know, do this. Ah! Okay, so I fell or I fell down. When you fall, you naturally go down. I hurt my hurt myself a little bit. Uh, I'll be okay though. Is there a hospital near here? I, I hope so. All right. Um, not necessary. It's okay. So yeah, you can say I fell down or I fell, for example. So this is the intransitive form. Uh, you can fall down and add the thing that you fell down on. <laughs> so for example, I fell down the stairs. So if you have a group of stairs, and you fall down the stairs. Um, you can't say, I fell the stairs. It doesn't work. You have to say, I fell down the stairs in that case. Okay, just falling took my breath away. Uh, fill and fill up. So you can fill your gas tank for, of your car, and you can also say, I need to fill up my gas tank. Now, fill up, it can mean to like fill completely, but you can tell someone to fill something up halfway, but typically it means to fill completely. So as you can see, um, fill up does add a little bit more emphasis to fill. Next, 
freeze and freeze up. So if, so if you put something in your freezer, you know, above your fridge, or maybe you have a separate freezer, like uh, you put meat in there or something, um, it will freeze or it will freeze up. The thing is, this one, you can also have an idiomatic meaning. So if a person becomes really shy and they don't know what to say, and they are speaking in front of other people and suddenly, uh, I am so nervous right now because I'm not comfortable speaking in front of others. Perfectly natural, perfectly normal reaction. If you, you know, if, if you have some kind of anxious behaviors, uh, you freeze. So if I say, so I started my speech and then I saw everyone in front of me and I just froze or and I just froze up. So if you say I froze up, you're really emphasizing and intensifying the idea that you froze and you didn't know what to do and what to say. Uh, help and help out. So in this case, help out just sounds a little bit more, a little bit more casual, a little bit cooler than help. So if someone says, uh, if you offer to help someone and you say, oh, hey, I can help you. Or you can say, I can help you out. So it sounds a little bit more casual. There's a little bit more oomph at the end of the help in that case. All right, next, hide and hide away. This is another case where it's a little redundant because when you hide something, you put it away from the eyesight of other people where they can't find it. So if I say, hey, where did you put that bag? And you say, oh, I hid it. Or, oh, I hid it away. Um, hide away is very redundant in that case. Now, why did you hide that bag? Oh, I didn't want, you know, if it's my wife and me talking, then um, maybe we want to hide something like a gift from our daughter or something like that. So I hid it away or I hid it. Hid is the past of hide. Okay, next, hurry and hurry up. So again, hurry up just emphasizes hurry. So if I say, come on, hurry, 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 or come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, the up really emphasizes hurry two times, right? Like hurry, hurry, hurry up, um, hurry as much as you can. Lend and lend out. So remember, if you give something to someone for a short period of time because they ask to borrow it, you lend them something. Um, libraries lend books to the public, right? So li you can say libraries lend books or libraries lend out books. Uh, if you lend something out to a freaking, you can lend something out to a friend, for example. All right, let's continue. Lift and lift up. This is a case where it's, again, redundant. To lift means to elevate something or raise something, like in an up position. So lift already means move something up. So if you say lift it up, it doesn't add too much. It's kind of redundant, but you're really emphasizing the lifting, right? You're like, lift, lift up, <laughs> more, lift more, kind of. Uh, mix and mix up. Um, so if you are cooking something, uh, let's say you're making pancakes. What do you need to make pancakes? Okay, it depends if they're vegan. If Okay, I'll tell you how I make pancakes. So you add some flour, you add some milk, and you add an egg, and you mix it. And if you really want to emphasize the verb mix in that case, you mix it up, right? So mix up flour with egg and milk. So uh, yeah, so first, you know, you take the flour, take the egg, take the milk, and then mix it up or mix it. And mix up just adds a little bit more emphasis. Pack and pack up. So if you are preparing for a vacation, you have to pack your clothes, pack the things you need to bring on the vacation, on your trip. And you can say, I need to pack things or I need to pack everything or I need to pack everything up. Now the up, it, it's almost like a more complete packing in this case. Like you want to make sure you don't miss anything. 
So if I ask um, my mother-in-law, she likes to go on vacations a lot on cruises and things like that. And, um, you know, I can ask her, oh, are you all packed or are you all packed up? And if I say, are you all packed up? It means like, have you packed everything, everything? So I'm really emphasizing, are you all packed? Are you all packed up? It's almost like a triple redundancy, like all packed and all packed up. Um, you can see that you can really emphasize the level of packing in that case. Uh, return to, return back to. If you really, really want to emphasize return, right? To return does mean to send something in the back, in the direction where it came from, right? So, uh, hey, can you return this to my mom? Can you return this back to my mom? This one, it's almost unnecessary to put the back in it. It is a little redundant because to return does mean to, you know, give it in the direction where it came from, to put it back in that direction. But you can say in casual situations, uh, return it back to someone. Next, we have send and send out. So if you work at a job and your boss asks you to send an email to the entire team. So your boss might ask, might ask you, did you send that email I asked you to send? Or did you send out that email I asked you to send? So to send out, to send, again, it means to send it in a, away from you, right? Like send it out, away, to other people. So it already means to send out. <laughs> So you can say send or to emphasize, to intensify the verb send, you can say send it out. Or, hey, did you send it? Yeah, I sent it out yesterday. Next, shake and shake up. So to shake, like if I have a, here we go. I have a water bottle. I can shake the water in this bottle. Or if I want to really intensify, and shake it up. I'm shaking up the bottle. This is similar to mix and mix up, shake and shake up. So, hey, don't forget to shake up the juice or don't forget to shake up the, the bottle before you drink it, for example. Okay. Sit, sit down, stand, stand up. I'm going to do these together because you have probably asked the question, Alex, why do you say stand up? Stand already means like elevate yourself, don't sit or don't lie down. Um, I can't tell you that. <laughs> the reason is it just intensifies the standing or it intensifies the sitting. If I just say sit or sit down, <laughs> I'm really, really emphasizing and intensifying that I want you to sit. So these are very common um, as imperatives, as commands to people. Um, stand or stand up. Now, if you are in a church uh, and, uh, you know, the priest asks you to stand, normally he says, please stand. Um, but if you're in a more casual situation that is not a religious service, somebody might say, hey, stand up, stand up. Like if you're in a karate class or something like that. And, you know, you're sitting, listening to your sensei, and he says, uh, stand up. Karate's on my mind because I've been watching Cobra Kai on Netflix, which is a pretty amazing series, but also a ridiculous series, but I kind of love it. Uh, wait and wait up. Similar to hurry and hurry up, you can tell someone to, hey, wait, like wait for me, or hey, wait up. Like wait up, wait, don't go. So you really want to emphasize, you really want to intensify the waiting in this case. Next, to wrap, finally, wrap and wrap up. So you can wrap a present, wrap a gift, right? You take the, the paper around, you know, for a birthday or for a holiday where you give gifts to other people, you wrap presents or you wrap up presents. Um, if you hurt yourself and you need to use a bandage, you need to wrap your arm or you want to like emphasize the wrapping you can say, oh, I need to wrap up my arm like every morning with a clean bandage for the next uh, seven days or something, if you have had a bad accident or something. Okay, Whew. that was a long one, but look, I hope you got some amazing 
useful phrasal verbs in this video. And if you want to make sure that you understand everything and test if you remember which, you know, is it up? Is it on? Is it down? Is it away? If you want to test your knowledge of the phrasal verbs, go to ingvid.com, do the quiz that is under the video, and let me know how you do in the comments. Until next time, thanks for clicking, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, wait up. Yeah, somebody's waiting. Well, they're waiting for me. I, I got to go.